darn good machine gun. It was cheaply made, but they they could service it a lot better than we could service ours, and uh, uh, we had trouble with that. They had a lot more of them in their in their organizations, and we had machine guns. Machine gunners are, if you want to be one, <laughs> be be my guest, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. As a machine gunner, you are the primary target for the opposition because you have an automatic weapon, which means your firepower is more than the rest of the guys. So uh, uh, I had a BAR uh, for a while there, which was an automatic thing, and I hated that thing. It was it weighed 20 pounds, and uh, it, it had a bipod on it, which I threw away, and um, it fired. It, it was weighed 20 pounds, like I said. It fired from an open bolt. In other words, the bolt was back, and when you pulled the trigger, your um, uh, bolt was released. And then go and strip a, a round off of the magazine, put it in the chamber, and fire. And then it's back. It's like like firing a jackhammer, you know. It's, and I was here. I was with. Uh, I weighed 140 pounds at the time. I had had the BAR. I had let me see. Had 240 rounds of O3 uh, ammunition and 20 in the magazine and 150 rounds in uh, bandoliers and um, the um, uh, magazines were in a belt, big pouch like that. Well, my problem was I was supposed to have had a pair of suspenders that you hooked up. They didn't give it to me so I would go, you know, in, in a march or something like this uh, with the BAR over here, I was holding up the pants so that the the uh, ammunition belt wouldn't strip them down. But um, I finally got got, got rid of that. Oh, I hated that thing. <laughs> well, it would uh, if you were in the rain or something like that. It wore your raincoat because you do not. You take real good care of your weapon. Remember that, guys. Yeah. See, he just uh, uh, qualified with a rhino. He didn't you? See? Yeah. And uh, you take care of it. Of course, your weapon is your the main thing, and you have other things. So, but uh, you take care of it because that's your life. You'd be happy to know. I had a friend who's going to come, and he owns a BAR, but he couldn't make it. So. Well, I had <laughs> I had an assistant gunner. He was six two and weighed about uh, two hundred and twenty pounds, I guess. And I never could, I never could get him to to carry it. And he was always going to whip my my well I. I we, Forget what it was he was going to whip, but uh, he he was always going to do that. But he was the biggest chicken I've ever seen. He, uh, where were we? Up in Germany. Oh, he uh, ran into a, a German who shot at him. Well, he he came in and uh, screaming and hollering where we were complaining that he'd been hit, he'd been hit, you know, on the shoulder. We looked at it and it went through his shirt and just scorched his arm there like that. And uh, we got rid of it. But, uh, <laughs> but that, that was one of the things. I mean, we, we never did get uh, a happy time that I know of. <laughs> I know you were waiting to see this. Yeah, this is an M1. What they call an M1. It takes a magazine or a clip of eight cartridges. 
you fire the cartridge and when you fire the last one it kicks out the the uh, clip and goes ping like that which uh, really and truly I don't know why they did it because you know darn well when you were out <laughs> but that's what it was yeah see it uh, your uh, cartridges were in here and it went down like that see but um, this is what I love uh, well not really love just like a lot you know <laughs> but um, uh, this is what I well I actually wound up with three of them uh, from while I was there and uh, very good very accurate uh, just about uh, free of a lot of care but you took care of it anyway the biggest thing was down here is is um, what, what happens when you shoot the bullet goes out of this one but the gas that follows it comes down into this tube and recocks it so uh, you have to keep that and watch that so that it doesn't uh, hmm this is set for a grenade launcher okay um, yeah they had uh, a grenade launcher that fit over here and you had they gave you an anti-tank grenade or a hand grenade that was fired from this and they give you a blank cartridge to put in here to propel it but um, that was one of the things that we had the one I got originally in, in Britain there and I told uh, Mr. There that uh, they had a box of them that they had brought over straight from the factory and they came it, it came time we, we when we went over we weren't issued weapons that they issued us in, in Britain and um, they would uh, open the box and it had this much a cas, a cas Cosmoline, which is like an axle grease. It's real thick stuff. It's a preservative. You could have put that rifle out in, in uh, a field for a hundred years and it'd never rust because it couldn't get through all that stuff. But they had it packed all up and down the rifle in the bore and in the receiver. Then they gave us three rifle patches like that to clean all that off. We were on um, uh, a bivouac there in Britain and we did not have any facilities at all. We had, uh, they would bring us water in a Lister bag. I don't know if you know what a Lister bag is. Anyway, it's a big bag and uh, they hang it from a, a tripod and, it, and it, they fill it full of water and it's got these, this type of of a uh, thing on the on the bottom to draw your water. Um, other facilities? Uh, no. Uh, if you um, had to use it, uh, where is the entrenching to? Yeah. This would be your latrine if you had to use it you would go dig what they called a cat hole and uh, well I won't go in further <laughs> I think you know what I mean <laughs> but but really and truly it's you know of course we were what they called uh, a casual comp uh, group uh, a casualty company is one that doesn't have any formal uh, organization and uh, uh, you were there temporarily and it was what they called a, a replacement depot or repel depot and that's where you went when you uh, uh, go back to your unit up there.